So I just finished a design for a startup out of Oregon. They are a, yeah, I guess you could call them in the cannabis industry. The design itself is very illustrative, but I'm at the point where I'm going to take it to code. Uh, this video isn't me taking you through every bit of that, but it more or less showing you how I set up a new WordPress theme from scratch. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it and I hope you'll follow along. So in beginning a new WordPress theme, I tend to navigate towards a starter theme of sorts. Uh, the one I've tried and tested is one called underscores. Uh, this one's typically out of the box, just kind of more optimized and uh, less clutter for uh, WordPress itself. Um, so obviously you need to install WordPress, your directory or working directory locally to get things started. So that's where I'm going to begin. The age old tactic of downloading WordPress can start as easy as clicking the big old download button at wordpress.org. A new feature that I'm kind of getting into is the WordPress CLI. Uh, I think if you install it, it gives you quite a few commands you could do from the command line. You can do actually a ton from the command line without ever visiting the admin itself if you're familiar with WordPress. At this stage, I just use it to install WordPress. To it's, I mean, the core itself. So it's not a huge tool in my arsenal yet, but I do plan to take it um, a bit further um, by doing things more the command line way, just because you can actually like install or um, deactivate plugins or query how many post types you have or, and see that all in plain text. So to get started, I will mention that I'm using just basic MAMP just so you guys can follow along. It's a very easy installation. Some developers might hate using this tool. I don't I don't mind it. I kind of am into the GUI or graphical user interfaces myself. So it's not a big deal that you use this. It does take up a lot of space in your system, but you can use other tools too if you're against it, like Vagrant or uh, there's a new one called Valet from the guys that created Laravel. It's pretty cool. But anyway, for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna use MAMP to get started. When you do install MAMP, it usually does this launch page, which connects to your local host. This is an alias to a folder inside your install, and that is under web server in the panel here. Um, mine is currently configured to a folder in my Dropbox folder. I use Dropbox for work um, pretty much for everything because it just makes life easier. You can do yours just on your local system, doesn't matter. But by default, this won't be set to something like mine, so you'll need to change that. So inside my sites folder, I actually have an alias set up for the command line. If I just type, if I get rid of what's here, let's open a new tab. Uh, if I just type sites, it goes straight to that folder. Um, I use ZHS um, or ZSH as a helper for my command line tool. Just Google it; it's really cool. At this point, I do have a directory in here. Uh, it's called Phil W. The actual startup I mentioned in the intro was a company called Farming with Love, and they're cannabis consultants. So that's just a quick overview. So in this directory, since we're in there now, if you if you look, it'll that's where I'm at. Um, I'll clear that, and this will. At this stage, we can either download WordPress directly, like just clicking this button, which works, uh, or you can do, it's kind of a neat uh, command. It's just WordPress core install or download actually. So, so WP core download. I'm gonna bump up this text size for you guys. So in that, if you type open and dot, it'll open in the finder. Uh, so it downloaded the core version of WordPress, which is basically the same as this guy. 4.7.2 is the current version. So that's cool. Uh, we still need to configure our local environment to use a database. And that's why I use MAMP. It's pretty easy to do. So if you change the config, uh, file name to WP config instead of WB dash config dash sample. Uh, we'll open this in sublime here. 
behind the scenes. I'll bump up the size here too. With MAMP, the username and password is always root. And if the more you use it, the more you just remember this stuff. Or leave uh, the SQL host name to localhost. And if you want locally, it's not a huge issue, but you can do this salt stuff here. If you go, just visit that link, it'll generate these. I do it just out of habit. You can also change the table prefix uh, for this install. I think I'll just leave it as is. Um, so at this stage, we need to create, I just closed the window, I shouldn't have, create a database. You can do so from MAMP, or you can use MySQL from the command line, however you want to use it. I've done both. You can use SQL Pro to connect to something like that, whatever you want to do. So you can see I already have some databases here for other projects. This one I'm going to just title Farming with Love, just the abbreviation F FWL. So that's essentially it. The database is created. And at this stage, I need to just type in that database name here in our config file. Cool. So I'm going to close that file because we're not going to really work in this giant directory of files. We're actually going to create a theme using the underscores theme here. And I'll actually name it the same convention. Actually, we'll call it the actual name here, farming with of, and then FLW. Um, author would be me. Well, we'll do my company. If I can type. There it is. So description, just a theme, a custom theme for farming with love. That could be way better, but I'm just trying to get this going. Take this to add SAS. I do it just because it's a habit, but I, in the end, I just end up deleting all the predefined styles and starting from scratch. So do what you want there. So when you generate this, it takes this name and title and stuff and adds it to like actions and functions within the theme. So it's pretty handy there. So you can always target it and something you'll remember. As you download it, the theme will add it to our folder or our themes folder. Cool. And with that installed, we should be able to go to localhost 8888/fwl. Cool. And if you've made it this far, you'll see this screen depending on what theme you're using. And we'll call this farming with love. Do my random username. So I use a weak pass password, but I don't care if I can get it right. There we go. So you confirm that. My email is this. And for now, we'll discourage because it's local. Okay, so with that set, we will install WordPress. The famous one five minute install. And you log in. And we want to change our theme, is the first thing. So, here we don't have a screenshot yet, but we can add one later. It's essentially just replacing the file that comes loaded with the theme. Um, so, with that activated, here's our theme. <laughs> underscores is pretty bare but it does have some like browser defaults and resets and stuff like that and there's just things built in that you you know wouldn't get out of the box otherwise many would stop there I tend to set up my development environment completely at this point so with that in mind I open the theme well first I'm going to get in it and do that locally just to keep things versioned so we'll just do get, we'll initialize, and then I'm gonna change some things in our setup to ignore um, so that I don't commit these to a repo 
that don't need to be like um, node modules and stuff when we get going. So we'll come back to that. First thing I want to do is create, or I want to do npm init in this folder. And this gives us what I'm getting at is I'm going to use uh, gulp to take care of a lot of background tasks. Um, since I use SAS and JavaScript and maybe images, um, all that can be optimized and you can build these tasks to do so on top of Gulp. And Gulp gives you basically this place to define these tasks. So you need node.js to do that. And npm is kind of that. When you do npm in it, it gives you this walkthrough. You can, you can be in depth here. Sometimes the defaults are perfect. I don't really plan to work on a big team with this, so I'm just kind of gonna enter through this. And then I'll ask if it's okay, and you'll put, you'll put yes, and good to go. We'll go ahead and create a gold file. So I'm gonna capitalize this just to make it easier to find, but it's called the gold file.js. Since I do this a lot, I use a snippets manager. Um, a lot of you could use Sublime for this, but I just found this one a little more user friendly. My setup doesn't change a ton, so I tend to use the same kind of snippets. What we're looking for is first to find our actual file here. Yeah, this one. And I'll walk you through all this. I didn't want to type all this on screen and save you guys some time. So to use these things, we need a few more directories, um, but essentially all this will be those tasks I mentioned. So here's one called browser sync that essentially when I perform certain tasks, it watches and updates the browser. So I don't have to refresh manually. This one's for our SAS code. You write gulp.task, you name it, and then you pass in an anonymous function and return a gulp property within this task. Here I've added a, some other uh, modules to create source maps. So when I do inspect element on my styles, I can see exactly what uh, SAS file it's coming from rather than the compiled SAS file I would normally get. Because when you do SAS, if you're not familiar, it's a bunch of like different files that have bits of CSS that compile into one, which ends up being this master style sheet as uh, underscores has here. Um, and you do a bunch of imports basically that impo import into one file. And then from there, I do an auto prefixing module, which is super useful. You don't have to worry about um, different browser prefixing and stuff. Big time saver. And then the SAS module itself, you can actually have it output errors and output in different styles. I use compress just to save space and loading times. Again, here's uh, what the source maps module does. It creates this directory called maps in our theme directory. And then that's where you'll get the inside um, information about the styles when you do inspect element. And then finally, it compiles to the actual style, that CSS file here. So we'll get to that in a second once it does everything it's supposed to. Gulp watch is kind of a built-in task that essentially looks for changes. That is done basically on any task you put inside this function here. And you just call watch and pass in where, oops, pass in where that should where the gulp should watch basically and then the actual task on it and then with the browser sync module you can add on this reload functionality so when any of these things are changed the browser will reload and you could set that up for you know more than just sas and javascript if say you optimize an image like I've done here. You can do the same, or you can do it for HTML files, PHP files, etc. The only caveat with that is the more you have here, the longer it takes to compile and, and do. So you'll have to be careful with that. I do one for here for images. I might, I'm, I don't use this that much. I might remove it from the snippet before long, but for now I'm gonna keep it. Essentially it just 
looks for a new image if it's newer in this module here it'll grab it and optimize it using these settings you can google npm image min to find different optimization settings and then um, finally it's output to an actual image directory which we still need to create everything's going to live in an assets folder and then their corresponding folders below that and then the same for javascript you can do a ton here and I'll put different files. Um, I use two different folders, one for development and one for distribution or production. So when I do commit a theme live, the dev folder stays as local and the d distribution goes actually live and everything is compressed and concatenated and all that. And then finally, the last task down here is the default task. And essentially uh, what that does is when I just actually type the command gulp it won't work now but all of those tasks will will run basically so you can define those in an array here at the very bottom i know it's kind of hard to see but it's, that's essentially it i know that's maybe over some people's heads it was over mine at first too i was not familiar with this but i went from code kit which is an actual gui app to this and I found it to be, I don't know, I guess more adaptable to your workflow. Uh, CodeKit, it kind of does some magic behind the scenes and you don't always know what the hell's going on. So um, it's kind of scary in that regard because I like to keep as much code as lean as possible is what I was trying to say. So we'll save this. I still need to add, do a little um, cleanup and add a directory called assets. In that directory, I want to add a few more folders. One will be images. And then inside that, I'll add originals. And then inside our assets folder again, I will add a JS folder. And inside that will be a dev folder and a dist folder. Dist. So I could automate all of this when I do WordPress with maybe like a, I don't know, action script or something, but I just haven't got around to it. Um, on top of the assets folder, I want to add a SAS folder. And then I'll create a new file just called style. I think it's, yeah, just style.scss. And it needs to be style um, because this file will eventually compile to the one that's already in our theme. And to, a theme to function in WordPress needs to have that style.css file. For brevity, I'll also add a partials folder, or prefix that folder with an underscore. That's mainly so it doesn't get compiled on its own. Uh, that's something to always remember. Um, so if the file itself has an underscore, the SAS module will know enough to not compile that. And then I believe that is it. We'll actually eliminate the starter themes stuff. I'm gonna get rid of that and that do, 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 do. I think there was a JS folder yeah I don't need any of this in deleting these files uh, since they were already included you need to go into your functions file if you're following along mind you and get rid of those from these in queue scripts I'm gonna keep one just to use as like a template for ours when we get to it. Um, I don't plan on using a custom header. Um, there's stuff included in this theme that I'm still not really, I don't really get why, but I get it at the same time. So I delete a, the customized file and I remove it from this functions file, the main functions file. Same with the custom header .php file. Template tags, what is this? Okay, we need these. Extras, we'll keep that. Jetpack, why not? Um, okay, so with that all in place, uh, let's create a git ignore. It's prefixed with a period, so make sure you have that. 
And in this, I'm going to do node modules. I think it's got the underscore in there. We'll find out. I could be wrong there, but uh, essentially that. The rest I think I'll keep. It's not a big deal. Okay, so at this stage, uh, I still need to install all those modules we were referring to in our GOB file. All these right here are defined by a variable and they're required, but we don't have them in our directory yet, so we need to actually add those. And conveniently enough, I created a snippet for that too. So here's all those. And essentially you just, you can go to npm, whatever.org I think or whatever, npm, and search and find all of these here. I basically ran into what I use by following other people or just realizing the need for something in my development. Uh, one thing to note is you have to run npm install and then all of your modules. And what I do is save to development, which means it just saves locally. Um, it doesn't install globally to your system. So it saves inside the themes folder and not uh, to your actual like root directory of your computer, which you want to do maybe for some things like Gulp or something like that. but most of these you don't and also that's a big do that for the sake of sharing it with any other developer so they can just run npm install when they get the theme and everything just installs and it works that's the beauty of it all so dependencies there's many but if you do things right it's really easy so if you run this um, you might have to say sudo um, mine set up to not deal with that so sudo would prefix everything here. So it'd be sudo npm install, yada, yada, yada. But so this will take a minute and there'll be a new directory that appears on the left over here in our theme. And I know this might seem like a ton of work to get things going, but I like the more you do it, the simpler it becomes. And then you can even set up ways to automate how you set up a WordPress theme. You can even create your own starter theme, but I've found that maintaining something like that is a pain in the ass. So I'd rather depend on others or other modules that get maintained. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind in your own projects. Cool. Okay. It looks like everything installed. Okay. Um, I'm getting, I got a few errors of some outdated stuff, but that's dependent on the modules themselves. So that's nothing we really have to worry about. Um, this the people that make it do <laughs> so with that done we have or we should have I wonder if you can refresh this um, well where did I install that okay there should be a folder over here, but there is not. Let me reopen this. Oh, okay. So guys, I messed up. I was in my root directory of my actual WordPress theme installing old mod, like node and all this crap. I actually need to be in my theme directory itself. Um, I was in it in Sublime and the whole time I was thinking, okay, I'm in this directory, but in my command line, I was not. So I'm gonna actually uh, CD into that and then we'll actually do this all again so sorry for the um, fail there so we're in our theme folder now cool so let's do npm in it again real quick this time and we made our gulp file so we'll actually run the uh, snippets lab run this Okay, so we have, now you see the node modules folder over here. And the reason, that's the reason I added it to get ignore. 
that folder is massive. Look at all these things. So, I mean, it's kind of annoying that you need that many dependencies, but hey, whatever works, right? So in our git ignore, I wanted to make sure I didn't commit that because pushing that live or somewhere is, there's no reason. So it's all built locally with that in mind. So we can do a git status here and you'll notice none of that stuff is tracked. So we actually want to do, I think I was in the wrong folder before, so we we'll actually want to do git init on this one. Okay, cool. And then we'll get status. If I can type. Okay, and as you can see, our ignore file doesn't have the npm or node modules folder. Uh, that's on purpose. And make sure you do that before you add anything to your staging environment. You can, I mean, you can undo that, but it's just a pain in the ass to do. So, uh, so at this stage, we'll do git commit or git add and git commit m or am. Uh, we'll just do initial commit. Okay, cool. So our state, or I can't type. We should be clean on the branch master. Okay, um, so with each new feature, I tend to check out a new branch if it's a big one uh, or a new, maybe new page design or something like that. But since I work locally and primarily alone, I don't really need to go crazy with branches and um, tags and stuff like that, versioning, etc. At this point, we have our node modules and everything else installed. Um, we can hopefully run Gulp and get to, you know, be in business. It looks like we are. So cool. So as you can see, those modules, it started SAS or browser sync, watch images, JS, um, and all that stuff. We made those folders to have all that stuff in here. This style SAS file, this main one will compile into this one. And then you can see our source mappings going well there just to look at the gulp file again all of our stuff lives in the assets folder sas and it's looking there uh, so if, to really confirm that this is working let's get just a basic body class background black okay so that's not working yet let's double check our work because body isn't a class Dill hole. Okay, <laughs> sorry. There we go. Uh, yeah, it works. Cool. So we, or at least I, am set up to start working on this theme, and that and that's all it's entailed on mine. As you can see, I I ran into some errors, but the more you do it, the quicker it becomes, and you'll find your own techniques and modules and stuff you'd prefer to use. So don't assume my way is the right way, but just you know use this with a grain of salt if you're skeptical of gulp or getting wordpress installed using a, a basic bare bones theme this is a way to go about it uh, i hope you dig it and let me know what you think in the comments all right thanks guys